Hi guys, this is an experiment for Sam and me. We have known each other for years and we connected recently and had some really interesting conversation that we felt we wanted to share with others. And we're not claiming to know anything, but we had a lot of provocative questions come up that we're considering in our lives and thought we'd share and hopefully learn from others as well and kind of have a dialogue. And you know, we are short on time in life and there's so many things we wanted to write a blog about or look into and thought maybe just videoing our conversations exactly. was the best yeah. way. Yeah, and, and the number one thing we just agreed on is honesty because there's so many things in our lives that don't feel authentic or real anymore, starting with Facebook and social media. And one thing we both noticed, um, Sam is 30, I'm 29, about to turn 30, is we think a lot about career and we don't think it's a coincidence that at this stage of our life we feel quite lost in our careers. And we feel pressured to figure it out really soon if we want to have kids in the future. So right now there are kind of all these questions that we're considering that seem really timely and there's a lot of awareness around right now, women in their careers, women in tech, but we kind of wanted to take a different angle and really kind of understand what's beneath that and talk more about in the day to day what we're facing, what we're thinking about. Exactly, because every time we meet, we just it's just this constant flow of amazing conversation, totally uncensored, and it was like really interesting in terms of our backgrounds as well, because we both have a finance and a tech background, and Sam went to HBS, but it's not just the two of us. I just had a similar conversation last night with other girlfriends. We all feel incredibly lost in our careers, and it's different. In our 20s, it seemed to matter less, because there's, we could have maybe two or three more careers, but at least on my end, I feel like this is the, my last shot. And that's why I am really like, obsessed and paranoid about thinking about career decisions. And have, not really knowing who to turn to and what to talk about and what questions to ask. So we kind of wanted to take this as an opportunity to ask the questions no one's asking and yeah. be really honest about those answers. So here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we started already, I love it. And, I mean, yeah, it's, it's tough. It's like, it, it's paralyzing, to be very honest. I, no matter what it is that I'm doing, I feel like it's the wrong decision. If I'm doing a finance gig, I feel like I'm not being true to myself. If I'm doing a startup gig, I feel like there's so much pressure as well from, from all sides. Yeah, and one of the things we were starting to think about was, if we were men, what would be different about yes. this? And I don't know, a few different things come to mind. Yeah, I mean, so for me, one thing, because I just had this conversation on Sunday where I was telling someone like, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that. And he's like, you're stressing out too much. You have your entire life to think about these things. But I don't. And when I told him like, I do want to have kids, he's like, oh yeah, my mom raised me all right and she was working, but it's different. And I, I really do think there's certain things that work well for certain stages of one's lives. And it is important to figure these things out because I don't, I personally don't know a lot of female tech startup entrepreneurs in their call it even 30s, 40s, 50s, right? So Right, very few. And I think the thing that like I got me thinking about what would be different is I have spent a ton of time and thought thinking about what my appearance as a woman says to me when I show up to meetings with startups or clients or interviews over the fast, past few years. And I think one of the reasons is because I've actually been told that. I've been told by recruiters at Google that I was meeting with an all-male team and to like wear my hair up and wear glasses. Or <laughs> I I've didn't been even know that story. Yeah, or I've been told by like when I was in business school, a recruiter in tech in New York, that I was gonna have to be super aggressive to fight the fact that I look fragile and use those wow. words and that I need to kind of, I don't look scrappy, I don't look like I'm gonna kind of get my hands dirty and fight for a startup, despite having been, I've worked at startups, I've worked in finance awful hours, despite all the examples I could point to, he kind of was like, you're gonna have to fight this impression. And I think those conversations like don't really happen with men. Oh, so one thing that I think is fascinating is, in order to do well in nearly any career, you need to give it 150%. And it starts also with managing a personal life. And it's no coincidence that Steve Jobs and, and other people in the startup community will, for example, as men, just wear the same thing every day. They can just like roll out of bed, wear the same turtleneck. And I nearly try to do that, but it is, on one end, I do think women get judged differently if we were to wear exactly the same turtleneck every, every day. day. Yeah. Um, or not wash our hair, by the way. Washing our hair takes 
time, and I actually try to minimize it. I'm the first to admit that I do that. But also when I wake up in the morning and I don't put as much time into looking good, and I just, A, look in the mirror, and I just don't feel as confident because... You the way know we, you're going to be judged. Exactly. Yeah. The way we look is more important as a woman as well as just it takes... Then if I do spend more time on it, it just takes a lot of time. So it impacts confidence. It impacts the time we have to spend on other things. But one thing I'll also say is I'm also the first to admit that I think I judge myself harder than maybe a man would judge himself, but I also judge other women harder, like yeah, 100%. And if a woman goes on stage versus a man, I'll be like, oh, what does she have to say? And definitely in my head, I'll, I'll actually automatically categorize her. She's good looking, she's not good looking, versus a man goes on stage that is secondary. But I will say, I think number one is realizing that that happens and then accounting for it. Because now that I know that this happens, I make sure to adjust for that and be like, okay, you're doing that thing again, and let's actually listen to what she has to say. And isn't it amazing that she's one of the few women who's actually brave enough to go on stage and talk? Right. And this is, I don't know if this is good or bad, but I noticed that it's happened to me in almost every career, every position. There's been a client or someone I work for that turns a job conversation in the direction of dating or something that's borderline inappropriate. Just last week, I met with someone who was a work contact who ends up asking me about my dating life and like, could I have dinner? And sort of, I don't know if this is good or bad. Is it an opportunity women have that, you know, you can turn that into, yeah. get attention from someone, you turn that into a work conversation, but it's also uncomfortable. And I also feel like that wouldn't happen to a man. And then I'm in the position, should I see them again because I want to talk about business or should I not because it's gearing towards, they might want to bring the conversation somewhere else. And I don't think men have to think about that as much and juggle, you know, do I work in that I'm not single, juggle these kind of thoughts. Yeah, agreed. And I don't own, honestly know if there will ever be a black and white answer. Men and women are different. Men and women, like, it's more, like, will be attracted to each other potentially. And, and I do agree, like, maybe there are sometimes benefits in terms of, like, now currently it seems like business wants to help, like, support women more. Um, but I think it's just important to be aware that these things happen and try to deal with them. And, and, and sometimes I think that there is like a gray zone where you never know what is going to happen. Because who knows, maybe, I mean, you, I know that you have a boyfriend, but, but like, who knows, yeah. Maybe if she you didn't have a someone. boyfriend, like maybe yeah. you guys wouldn't marry, right? Like, you never know. And I think it really comes down to being A, respectful, and yeah, but, but being important, it's also important to talk about these things. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I think one of the, the other positives, as you said, is that women being a bit of a minority in this space, they're kind of advocates for each other in a way that men are not really doing that. So they're engaging. We have a group that's so yeah. kind of active in helping each other. Yeah. But I think on the other hand, there are not enough models of women exactly. who are kind of taking on apprentices, so to speak and kind of really mentoring. So I think we're often searching for that. Yeah. I remember, like I was looking for a job for and internships for two years over HBS, and I could probably count in my hands the number of women I met with versus men. Or like I've been doing angel investing and there's a ton of men in all these groups, very few women, and they don't always understand the ideas targeted at women. Or I've seen one woman or two women pitch. So it's kind of the community is becoming aware, but needs to bring that more like mentorship, which I think people want to do. I agree, and I think it's a vicious cycle nearly because it, we're so inspired by seeing people like us achieve great things, right? Like if we see, but it, it's hard, if we see a man overcome hurdles that are specific to men, it's hard to identify with that. But if we have role models and um, then on the one end inspire, but that also might have similar problems to overcome. I've never heard a man talk about how he like deals with kids at home or how he deals with juggling, putting, looking good in the morning. You know, just very different sets of problems that men and women have. But also one thing we discuss a lot is the whole judgment part that it's, we think it's undeniable and there's a lot of studies out there that show that, that women get judged more and in a different way than men. So it, it's tough, like how is someone supposed to become a thought leader if that journey to becoming a thought leader is so much harder than to a man versus a man and, and it just amplifies that cycle. Yeah, and I think it's interesting thinking about the fact that we're trying to figure out our careers now so that when we have children, we're more stable. And it's almost like this thought that there's a penalty to having kids or that that could be, you can't be hustling at that time. 
where often for men, it's looked on really right. positively right, right. if they have children because they're going to be more, they're going to want to be make more money, they're going to be more responsible, they're going to be at a stable point in their lives, where for women, it's kind of this unspoken thought. I even, I've had like another headhunter say to me, ask me that question, like when I want to have kids because startup life isn't con like conducive for that. And a lot of women who choose that path want to like make their nest egg while they're young and have children later. And the fact that that even comes up as a conversation probably wouldn't for men. Yeah, it, it's, it's interesting because women, so oftentimes I'll bring up arguments like, oh, I think this is the case or that's the case. And people are like, oh, no, men have exactly the same problems. But this is a fun exercise to do that I, like if you go into Google and just type in management team and just pull up the first 10 top results and just see in those management teams, what's the percentage men versus women? And if you have similar results as me, it's going to be 80 to 100% men in management teams. And even if you type in like social media or cooks, industries considered dominated by women in the top echelon, again, it's men dominating it. And one factor might be kids, but there are definitely just other factors that come into place. And, and, and just even common misconceptions that I think we aren't even aware of that even, I'm not pointing fingers, I don't think there are very few of any people who are intentionally keeping women right. away from right. being successful. And and if there are, I think it's like subconscious, A, right. and it's equally men as women. women right. Us and keeping it, each other back in ourselves. Right, and it's kind of self-selecting. Like you have a lot of men who have su successfully backed or invested in male entrepreneurs and they kind of have that network and that network is a cycle that keeps going through that same group and there's a pattern recognition there to seeing the type of people who have been successful and meeting more of those through each other and kind of women have to sort of break into the system and do that for each other as well. And one thing that's really encouraging is because I used to ask myself how much of this is genetic, how much of this is nurture yeah. through a culture and we run this group called Dreamers and Doers and it's, it's female focused, but we notice certain patterns where we'd, whenever we'd pitch an idea, we'd first give disclaimers why it wasn't as good or how we just started and, or we'd apologize in situations um, we shouldn't have been apologizing. And over time we've established this culture where we'd call each other out when we did this. And within a few weeks, all of us noticed that we did it considerably less and we continue to do so. So I think a lot of it, in fact, is nurture and just also, in terms of men are considered as the person who's supposed to be good at um, bringing money home, not so much raising kids. And maybe men sometimes don't get the full credit as they should when they are stay-at-home dads. But similar, when a woman is trying to do something that she previously wasn't perceived as to be good at or was her role, that, that she will be judged more for that. And I think it's just something where we, and it's our responsibility, it will be our daughter's and our son's responsibility to change that. Right. Because men or women aren't better or worse, but there's a problem that 80% of the people starting successful companies are men. Right. And I think there's a very different skill set that men and women bring with each, with them that can't completely be ignored. It would also be a problem if every company started was by a woman. Right. And I think it's one thing interesting we noticed that like women working in teams seem to like we've used a phrase one plus one equals six or equals ten with women where they really want to come together and you know come together as teams. You see that a lot of the female successful female startups are kind of these teams of women. You rent the Runway, Guild Group, Birchwack, there are several of them that you think of these duos of women. And it's interesting to me is the media just portraying them as like these dynamic duos or do they work well is that way together and why the same portrayal yep. doesn't happen for men whether they're in teams yep. or not are there really less team male founders or is it just the way we're hearing about it or talking about it and there's this stigma that women aren't helping each other as much and are very catty and we've witnessed two extremes where where I think let's face it most of the time if a woman wants to succeed at the top she is competing against men she has to nearly adapt to work to that environment and maybe there are cases where women are less eager to help. I've, I've heard a lot of like examples of oh women are less um, eager to mentor and but one thing we've noticed is we've created this environment in, in our group of girlfriends where women are so incredibly helpful and so incredibly eager to help and we think it's and responsive. Yes, yeah. so much so um, 
we've had so many people partner, give each other like jobs and cooperate. And I think it's a certain environment that women thrive more. And we think if the same group existed for men, um, there wouldn't be, be as different. much there wouldn't be as much collaboration. So we're still trying to figure out what exactly the the right. secret sauces, right. but there's something is it that to it. They know that we need that because we're in a minority in this it, it sector, so we need to help each other. Or is it that just there's an, an sort of a whether it's nature or nurture, there's a tendency to want to help others, or we don't really know. But it's interesting when we've talked to guys, like yeah. they don't really have that same desire to create a community focused on helping like advance each other's careers. And maybe it's because they don't have to. But. And this is a bit personal, but why I think it's why is it even important? Why do women even need to make money? Why do they need to do anything? And this is something I personally struggled a lot, where I was petrified of aging because let's face it, it's different if you wait if you hit thirty, if you hit forty, if you hit fifty. Women just don't age as well. Whereas, like, if a man when he's fifty, he can still have a twenty-five-year-old wife or girlfriend. And what I realized and why I no longer am afraid of aging is that each, sta each stage of our life has very unique perks to it. And it's just really noticing them, being appreciative of them. So it might be in one end like studying a lot or one end like going out a lot. And sometimes we'll be getting kids, sometimes we'll be working a lot. But I think for that reason, it's important that we really maximize each stage. And now yeah. it's career. Like Right. And I think it's really interesting. I think I thought in college, I probably would have thought I would have had my career at 30 sounded far away. Probably thought my career would be set by then. I'd be working up wherever it is I want to be. And I feel probably the most confused now, <laughs> even having come out of business yeah. school and kind of feel like this is, as you know, Gage said, the make or break time where the next few years I need to get on track and be in a certain trajectory. So when I have my family, I'm not doing this, you know, finding where I'm going to end yeah. up anymore. Um, so I think it's, I don't know, it makes you ask a lot of questions and really think about. One thing I've been wondering, and I'm, it's not based on any statistics, but what I notice more often is there are a lot of men starting female-focused companies just because there's money there. Yeah. Pinterest started by a man. Etsy started by three men. And I see less women starting male-focused companies, so I, I, I feel like I notice men are more able to work on things that they are less Target passionate women, about, yeah. but because there's money involved. And I see that women, and I don't think it's a bad or good, but at the same time, so maybe men are better at putting their personal interests aside, but I think women are better at intuition and at gut, and I've noticed that over and over again that women can sometimes sense things that men can't, can't as much, and just society as, as a whole would benefit if we... Combined. Yes, combined forces. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's really interesting. There's a lot of men founders behind ideas really targeted at women. Like even Guilt Proof or right now Glam Squad, it's for women, hair, makeup, nails. It started, founder was a man. So it's really interesting that they can see a market opportunity in that way. And I don't know, it'd be interesting to under, but I think that they need to combine with women to reach a market that women relate to. Yep. And one subject I think is interesting too is the whole salary subject and and I notice so many women who have so many side projects that they don't charge for so many yeah. women volunteering and and in this group that we run actually first of all not that many women even though it's an entrepreneur focused group not that many women are fundraising and half of the women who are fundraising are fundraising for nonprofits and even really like me who's really involved with the group I haven't like I run it as a nonprofit even though there's so much demand and I was wondering the other day like if it weren't for men who had established that we ought to be paid a certain amount for jobs, would, for we, time. Like, would, would we even be charging money? I mean, like, I, I don't, I yeah. hope we would, but I actually think that the whole argument is like, oh, women are the victim, they're not getting as much money, but who knows, maybe if it wasn't for men, we wouldn't even be getting any right. money. And maybe I, the onus is on us to yeah. kind of charge for our services yeah. and like charge for the work we're doing. And also asking, I mean, the whole lean-in idea, like really asking to yeah. be compensated, which is, I think, harder for women. Yeah, and I feel so uncomfortable. And I, part of it is me worrying if I will get judged for having like the wrong interest in mind because I should be like nurturing. I shouldn't be putting myself first. It's it's right. it's, it's lots of it's like a lot of conflicts. Right, and kind of the conflict of like having to argue for what you're worth. Yeah, is 
and it's been really challenging. I mean, we both like you worked at, in private equity. I worked at I in banking. At yeah, Goldman, yeah, banking. Um, I worked at a hedge fund. Yeah, and we, we're still having this conversation. Right. It's it's uh, we both know we should be paid, but it's still uncomfortable. Right. Very yeah, very uncomfortable. Uh, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, another topic we, we discussed is, and there might be answers to it, but it, we thought it was interesting if you think about what does it take to have a successful company and why do companies fail. And these days, most of the CEOs and newer companies oftentimes have an engineering background and they're men. But you oftentimes hear of companies failing because they didn't find the right target audience, they didn't find the right product market fit, they like, didn't communicate properly the value proposition, so call it branding. They scale too quickly or too slowly. Yeah, or, or, yeah. or there are lots of HR issues. So a lot of things where women are apparently innately good at or more dominate more. So like social media, branding, um, HR, and those are always viewed supple supplementary skill yeah. sets. And these people so are never, like very rarely co-founders, similar to like designers. And is it just a coincidence that every single Every single industry that is more dominated by women is the one that's less valued. And by the way, for each one of these segments, like I did the exercise for social media. If you Google thought leaders, experts, social media, dominated by men, the top echelon. It's just, just food for thought. Yeah. Again, like there might be studies that prove us wrong, but just right. Kind of that. more like anecdotal. We're, yeah. I mean, we've read a lot of studies, and but I think what we're talking about now is almost more anecdotal. Yeah. Do you want to break? 